Once I'm here, one nation, welcome to the news news with me, Sarah Miti. Top stories in the news. President Hichilema directs controlling officers to be committed on duty. 53-year-old nurse empowered with tractor. Choma DC says schools are 90% ready to open. Plus rains leave three boys homeless. Zanis News in detail. President Haka Inde Hichilema has called for high levels of commitment, dedication, and attachment to the people for effective service delivery from the public service. The president was speaking at Mulungushi International Conference Center when he officiated at the first senior management quarterly meeting by cabinet. Mr. Hichilema also stressed on the measures to improve programs implementation in the public service. Shilika Chabalengula now reports. President Hakainde Hichilema has called for more work to be done for effective public service delivery to be achieved. The president has since directed controlling officers and public service senior management to deliver to the expectations of the people. He made the directive when he officiated at a meeting to discuss measures to improve programs implementation in the public service. President Hichilema observed that there is a tendency in the public service to focus on personal interests, thereby deviating from service delivery. He charged that this year the public sector is resolved to achieve economic expansion through revenue generation by utilizing support instruments such as debt resolution and amendment of laws and regulations. More to focus on how you can work together more effectively and to do only one thing to deliver for the people that's all just to remind you that that's the only reason you are seated here as permanent secretary i see permanent secretary from the provinces that's good i hope they're all here from the 10 provinces can i see the hands of the provincial permanent secretaries you are all here very good I shall repeat why we are in these offices, is to deliver for the people. Nothing else. It's as simple as that. Sometimes we forget that. We veer off and focus on our personal interests, which then override public interests. Colleagues, there will be consequences for non-delivery. There will be consequences for non-delivery because we'll be supporting each other. The president is here to support you. Ministers, you are not in competition with ministers. No, you got it wrong. We work as a team. We will support you 100%. He also observed that the procurement system is tarnished when it comes to service delivery, noting that the costs in the public procurement process will have to be reduced. The process of procurement, we must always remember, what am I doing to help grow the economy? If the tender, madam, I'll talk about it, takes six months to adjudicate, 12 months, are you working towards this agenda? Relax, colleagues. She won't answer. I don't want to answer, madam. But for you, you know the answer. If it takes 12 months to procure a basic service or good that will contribute to economic growth and job creation and business opportunity, then we are not doing the right thing. Simple. You don't have to be extra intelligent to understand that. Because delivery is a function of an activity and time. Meanwhile, Secretary to the Cabinet, Patrick Kangwa, stressed the need for a corrupt free public service in order to enhance service delivery in the country. He acknowledged achievements made and appreciated the challenges encountered in public service delivery. New Dawn administration were all for one purpose, and that was to deliver change. Change 
for the people of this country. Change that will better the lives of our people. Mr. President, for this to be delivered, you requested that we put together a professional public service, a public service free of tribalism, a public service free of politics. Despite the positive strides, a few that I've mentioned, Mr. President, it is important to note that we still have room for improvement in the way we do our business. Mr. President, the source of concern to the public and top leadership of our country is that we can deliver more than we've delivered so far. Shilika Chavalengula, Fozanis, in Lusaka. Chief Mwansa Kombe of the Ngumbo people in Chifunabuli district, Luapula province, has commended the government for securing farming inputs for traditional leaders in the area. Speaking on Luapula province minister Njawa Simuto, a called on him, the traditional leader observed that the move to give farming inputs to chiefs will encourage more subjects to venture into farming. Kennedy Chomba has the rest of the story. Luapula province has received farming inputs which will be given to all traditional leaders in the province. Each chief will be given four decompound fertilizer, four urea, and a 25 kilogram bag of maize seed. Luapula province minister Njawa Simutowe says the move is aimed at increasing agriculture production among traditional leaders. So what while I am on if you to start a fair distribution, it while I am in Shivishaba shampoo once I won't be able to send the one with the three wire to Tuala me. I have an engine of my own. I have four pints, three four pounds. I see the fifth day. 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 I it's a, it, it's already a, you know a good indication of the the country over to agree with the control the shape of my inputs in fertilizer and uh, I'm happy to cook from for na Meanwhile, Senior Chief Mwewa wants government to improve on the credit window facility to give loans on time as it will help to improve production in the province. If you have to wait for it, you can't wait for it. 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 Government has put in place a number of initiatives aimed at increasing agriculture production in the country. Kenneth Chomba, reporting for Zanis News, in Chufnamuri District. A 53-year-old nurse of Palavana in Chongwe District has thanked the public service microfinance company PSMFC for financing her acquisition of a tractor valued at over 300,000 kwacha under the mechanization loan scheme. Matron Pasela, a midwife at Palavana Health Center, says the tractor has helped the family to cultivate land and improve their agriculture activities at her farm. Ms. Pasela said away from her farming activities, the tractor is helping her generate extra income through hiring of the machine to plow other people's fields. She said this initiative has also eased her burden of servicing the loan. She added that PSMFC also provided her with hands-on training on how to use the equipment, which she said has not given her any challenges. Ms. Mpasela urged all civil servants to find other means of sustaining themselves apart from formal employment, as this will increase their pool of income. To be tractor, because some years back, I really wanted to be a farmer stroke, 
civil servant. But I was not able to do that because I have got I had nothing to use in the field. That's what prompted me to at least to go to microfinance to ask them if they could assist me with the machine. I'm encouraging my fellow civil servants to go for public service microfinance. They will find a lot of assistance as far as the agriculture equipment are concerned. Because if you start early doing farming as as well as as you are working, you do farming at the same time. It will help you when you stop working. We plowed there about uh, five hectares of maize and a bit of sunflower. At least we did that because of the tractor. Because they, some years back, it was very very difficult for us to do that. The Zambia Agency for Persons with Disabilities, ZAPD, has embarked on a sensitization campaign to caution the public from parking on slots that are reserved for people with disabilities in public places. ZAPD Director General Frankson Musukwa says the awareness campaign is also centered on ensuring that shopping malls have public conveniences which are accessible to persons with disabilities. We have details in the following report. The Zambia Agency for Persons with Disabilities, ZAPD, has embarked on a sensitization campaign to caution the public from parking on slots that are reserved for people with disabilities in public places. The awareness campaign is also centered on ensuring that shopping malls have public conveniences which are accessible to persons with disabilities. The Bid Director General Frankson Musukwa disclosed this in an interview with Zanis shortly before conducting an awareness campaign in some selected shopping malls in Osaka. The Person with Disabilities Act number 6 of uh, 2012, uh, section 41, is very uh, explicit that all public uh, places must be, must be, must have equal access even for persons with, uh, with disabilities so that uh, uh, they can be accessed, like the accessible toilets, accessible uh, parking places, so uh, the place must be accessible to all the persons with disabilities. Shopping malls or public buildings must even have uh, ramps. They should have lifts. So it is the responsibility of each and every government and private uh, institution to make sure that uh, all public places are accessible for persons with disabilities. Bonfest Tumba is a paid inspector accessibility we explained the objective of the exercise. This week we've dedicated it to campaign. A campaign that we've dedicated this week to is on awareness. We've noted from the general public that there is actually low level of information in terms of our disability. You've seen from uh, my immediate right that these are designated parking spaces for persons with disabilities. But oftentimes they are being abused. The law is not uh, followed to the latter, and it is our hope that once we do this sensitization and awareness campaign, the law will be followed, further to which punitive measures, as spelled out by the Act, Act Number 6 of uh, 2012, would be put into action. Management at some shopping malls highlighted various measures being put in place to ensure persons with disabilities are all catered for. Kablonga Central Mall. Uh, we try to obviously comply. As you can see, we've, uh, we have a, a parking base dedicated for persons with disabilities. Uh, you can see we have ramps everywhere that uh, gives wheelchair access. And uh, yes, and, and obviously we dedicate the parking base that are closest to the, to the amenities, to the supermarkets, to make our movement easier. Yes. Most of them are not compliant. When they find that maybe there is no security guard nearby, they'll just park and leave their cars uh, there. Yeah. So if we find that one has parked in a disabled parking, we actually talked 
to them, we try and sensitize them and, and, and tell them about the importance of why they should not be able to park in such spaces. This move will educate the public to stop violating the law by parking in slots meant for people with disabilities in public places. For Zanis in Osaka, I am Sande Waria. We take our first break and we have more health news on the other side. Stay tuned. Kanti korela kibutuku manyim. Korela kibutuku wakusululam. Mutia nani utuku wakorela utasulula ni kutazam. Mutia kulabutuku wakorela usula meza mfutasi na araisi aya kwa mutabanim. Mukulio ukato kwa mezi mamubili wakengisa kufufuleluam. Mukulio ukona kutimela mahalari hola zeli shumi kaze peli haiba asafumanili kalafo zambu wam. Mutu ukona kuyambula choni butuku wakoreram. Kunwa mezi aska keni suwaka pa kunwa mezi ama silam. Kuchari choni mazo atezi masila kapa kuitusari ya peiso zeta psizwe ni mezi ama silam. Kuchari choze sika kwa elwa ni kuselezwa kwa linzinzim. Kuchari choze lovezi ilizeo alisika bukelezwa handem. Kuchari choze lekisi wa mama kululum. Kuchari tolwana manichualo ni mulo ze sika tapiswam. Luko na chwa ni kuiselezwa kwa butuku wa koreram. Kubilisa mezi akunwa kapa kubea mwate ni klorin. Mfutu maze li choza mina pili musika li chakalem. Mkwa li choza mina kafela kuulisileleza kwa linzinzim. Musike mwacha li choza mama kululum. Mwitu seka li mbalimbana kwa kafela. Mi musike mwa itusa viko poka pa mapepa amu yumba ze masilam. Mwone kuuli mutabani wala telwa mwaka li mbalimbam. Mwone kuuli kari mbalimba kamina kake nilena kwa kafela mani cholo ni kukwa eluamu. Lingosale, lita kumina kuzwa kubalikolo la maketem. Chikankata district in southern province has not been spared from the cholera outbreak which has hit most parts of the country. Traders in the area have since called on Chikankata Town Council to double its efforts in ensuring that all cholera prone areas are clean or shut down to prevent the disease from escalating. Cholera is a deadly disease which kills people within a short period of time, with many having lost their lives since the outbreak in some parts of the country. Chikankata district in southern province has also recorded some cases. Residents are now concerned with the levels of cleanliness in the district. <laughs> Both the local authorities and some senior citizens in the district want people to maintain high levels of hygiene. I am not targeting any particular but I am calling you uh, each and each individual. We team up marketeers, the council management, the workers. No one should be left out against this corona uh, uh, issue. There is uh, an outbreak of cholera in, in, in most, especially in Osaka. And the, the, the numbers so far are worrying us a lot since the disease broke out in, I think that should have been in September or October, somewhere about. Now the numbers that are uh, caughting this catching this disease uh, worrying us a lot. And uh, us being very close to Osaka and on the transit uh, um, the road that connects Osaka to southern province, I think we are at very high risk of catching this disease. So we want to appeal to our residents, especially the market here at Chinakata Junction, and also other markets in the district to exercise uh, maximum caution in 
the way they are doing their trading. Um, generally, I want to appeal to all the people in Jakarta to ensure that uh, we use the ITRA trains as a measure of uh, controlling this disease. Um, apart from ITRA trains, I want also to um, urge our people to ensure that they they use the water that has been boiled because those are the uh, media in which uh, this disease is transmitted through food, water, and the uh, unhygienic um, uh, environments. To successfully fight further spread of cholera, all stakeholders must do their part. Zanis reports in Chikankati district of southern province. Coca-Cola Beverages Zambia has donated four 10,000 litre water tanks and 500 cases of aqua savanna mineral water to the Disaster Management and Mitigation Unit, DMMU. The donated items are meant to help communities access clean, safe drinking water in the wake of the cholera outbreak. Laxon Makosa now gives us the details. Government has continued to receive support from the corporate world in its quest to provide clean, safe drinking water to communities affected by the Corella outbreak. Coca-Cola Beverage Zambia has thrown its weight behind government by donating four 10,000-litre water tanks and 500 cases of aqua savanna mineral water to the Disaster Management and Mitigation Unit, DMMU. The donated items are meant to provide clean, safe drinking water to communities hard hit by the Corella outbreak. The donation has been well received by DMMU, adding that the water tanks will assist in the provision of clean, safe water. I want to make you aware that your donation has been well received and will go to the intended beneficiaries. So under the principles of good governance, particularly those around accountability and transparency, the government will acknowledge publicly all donors that have come on board, all the amounts, and give details also of how the donations have been disposed of, so that you have that confidence uh, in the government system in ensuring that resources are judiciously and prudently utilized. The donated items are meant to provide clean, safe drinking water to communities hard hit by the Corella outbreak. To support the community by contributing 4,000 litre water tanks and 500 cases of upper savannah mineral water to the Disaster Management and Mitigation, DMMU. DMMU has continued to ensure that communities have access to clean, safe water as the unit is busy erecting water tanks in communities most hit by Corella. For Zanis, I'm Laxon Makodza. Still in health, Luapula Province Deputy Permanent Secretary Prudence Chinama has commended the Ministry of Health in the province for being alert against any cholera outbreak. Speaking during the Provincial Preparedness, Prevention and Control meeting held at the Provincial Health Office in Mansa District, Ms. Chinama noted that with the heightened cholera updates and sensitization, the general public has responded well by taking care of the environment. She said recording zero cholera cases in the province does not mean responsible personnel should relax but continue with their efforts. She has further urged all district health directors and line ministries to work closely with the district commissioners to ensure the province is cholera free. Meanwhile, House of Chiefs Chairperson Chief Chisunka called on traditional leaders to utilize their already traditional established structures to sensitize subjects to waterborne diseases. I therefore instruct all district health offices and councils to heighten inspection of public premises, that is markets, food premises and bars. I further instruct that public gatherings like funerals and churches be supervised under certain compliance of public health regulations. The public protector of Zambia, Caroline Sokoni, has called on public service institutions to take a leading role in the fight against cholera. Ms. Sokoni notes that poor hygiene and sanitation practices is directly linked to maladministration as it may be an indication of lapses in the provision of services that prevent the outbreak of, of diseases. She said public service workers entrusted with maintaining a clean environment must not neglect their mandate as failure to perform their duty could lead to, to disease outbreaks. The public 
public protector has since appealed to heads of public service institutions to prioritize hygiene in workplaces in order to ensure that members of the public are served without disruption. Ms. Sokoni also advised members of the public to take hygiene as a personal responsibility and not leave the fight against cholera to the government alone. The public protector, who took time to clean closed drainages at her family home in Mass Media Residential Area, aged the public to join hands with the government by ensuring that their households are kept clean. It means all of us, let's start cleaning up our environment. Let's not, you know, feel that someone else is treating. It's very important for us to realize that um, the cholera situation has a reason of out of maladministration. And, and maladministration is what the Office of the Public Protector investigates. So what does maladministration mean? Maladministration simply means bad administration. Somewhere, someone somewhere is not either not doing their job properly, or they are not doing their job, or they are li leaving it uh, to other people to do their job. They are neglecting their job. So um, how does this maladministration start? Um, I just wanted to demonstrate, you know, to everyone that maladministration is us. Because if someone who treats you in, in the office, they don't give you a proper service in the office, where is that person coming from? That person is coming from the community. Which community is he coming from? Is he coming from Kalingalinga, Mutendere, Woodlands, Chilenje? These are places where we live. So we are the people who perpetrate maladministration. So. If, if you look at your immediate environment, where you are coming from, uh, uh, do you clean your environment? Do you pick up garbage in your environment? Do you throw plastic papers, plastic bags, contributing to our drainages being blocked? So the resolution of maladministration is not just with the Minister of Health. It's not just with the Minister of Local Government. It starts from us as individuals. We take another break and we have more stories when we return. Stay tuned. Kole la ituma nyi. Kole la hi musong wako hit sham. Monchu una kwa chikiku musong wako le lam. Uko kata musong wako hit sham na kusanzam. Monchu yeni wum wa hit sham na menji adine menji alosum. Muyeji wukuma menji mumujimba wendi. Mulonga wakushweza kuhitisha menji ama ufulum. Muyeji na atuwe chukufwa muji ora ikumi na jiyadi. Ne ikutambula kukewa kwa kubula kulumbulu kamu. Injilanyi mwakutambu ila musongu wakapota mneni ikole lamu. Kuna menji akubula kushewa ichumbu hela menji ama jilumu. Kuda ya kuda ya kukwata na makasa ama jilu hela kukosa yenga na menji ama jilumu. Kuda ya kuda ya kubula kubutewa, hana kuwila anjinjim. Kuda infuta yichuta inabuli kuhembe wa chubwa him. Kuda ya kuda inagulandishe wa kumsanyi kwa kwa. Injilanyi ya ukange chila musongu waka pote mneni kole lam. Baka chenu menji enu akunwa, hela chenu mu yichumbu ya klorin. Wele enu kumakasa enu na mulola, na kuwela na wa kumakasa hanyima ya kuzacha chimbu shum. Tatishenu ya kuda heno kanda muyidim. Bae kuda ya kuda inagulanche wako nsanyi kwa kwa. Zatishenu chimbushu mpindi yejima. Bae kuzatisha nyingomu. Hela ipepa la yanju unju. Muna mwaguna tila malabishim. Mwanene nenu anju anagudukwa shila kuyimbushu. Hembenu chimbushu cha unyonji. Nawa china kubute wa. Insangu ino anailete liyu. Kudi agamtai waipate lam. Welcome back. In Southern Province, Choma District Commissioner Gamela Sikalea says schools in the area are 90% ready for opening of the 2024 school calendar that has been delayed due to the cholera outbreak. Mr. Sikalea says the district administration is ensuring that all sanitation requirements are met by all schools before the opening date. The district commissioner was speaking when he led the district health team in conducting random inspection of schools. Here's a report. In readiness for the opening of the 2024 school calendar, 
The Choma District Health Committee have intensified inspections in various secondary and primary schools to ensure cholera preventive measures are put in place before January 29 when the schools are set to reopen. Choma District Commissioner Gamela Sigalia led the delegation in conducting spot checks at Choma Secondary School, among other schools. The process of monitoring schools continues today. We support a few schools. We cannot risk our children or our children go to school environment which is not which is a threat to health. So schools in Choma District should ensure that they preserve the basic standard of cleanliness before schools open. We'll visit all the schools. And the district health department has made recommendations of what schools should prioritize. With cholera, the biggest issue that we have is sanitation. What we're recommending to the schools is to make sure that the toilets uh, are flushable. If not flushable, they are clean. The water that is provided to the learners is safe. It is either boiled or it is chlorinated so that the learners uh, have access to very, very safe water. Food that is used to cook for, for the pupils in an event that is a boarding school. We also make sure that the cooking environment is safe and the, the people that are handling the, the food for the learners are also inspected. Meanwhile, both the district and provincial education offices are on the ground to ensure that all schools are ready for reopening. Our desire is that uh, all the schools should be ready for the opening day. I wish to take this opportunity to make an appeal to the other schools in the district to work closely with the parents and the communities to ensure that the schools are ready before the opening day. We are working around crop to ensure that the safety of the children by the time they open is guaranteed. We are on the ground. It is a multi-sector approach we are using. The Ministry of Health, Environmental Health Technicians and the many other experts are with us. We are visiting all the boarding schools and more importantly that to ensure that the sanitation is up to date before schools open. Wakumelo Stali, reporting for Zanis in Choma District, Southern Province. In Lusaka province, the 2023 Constituency Development Fund, CDF, has facilitated the construction of two schools in Chongwe District, Kalimasenga Primary and Muyembe Community Schools, which have both been constructed at a cost of over 700,000 kwacha each, have been completed and will soon be commissioned. The schools are expected to reduce the distance covered by children to access education. We have details in the following report. This church building has been used as a classroom block to provide primary school education for children in Kalimansenga community of Kasisi Ward in Chongwe district over the years. In a bid to ensure that children in this community access education under a conducive environment, government has constructed Kalimansenga primary school through the Constituency Development Fund, CDF, at a cost of 730,000 kwacha. Chongwe District Commissioner Dr. Ivan Slupia, who visited the school in the company of various stakeholders during a CDF project monitoring exercise, stated that the construction of the school will reduce the distance covered by children to access education at other schools. We're happy with what is happening. As, as, as you have seen, this is, this is the building which uh, children were using um, for the community. Children had to uh, walk, you know, 10 kilometers to Chinkuli. But since it's been further, you know, it's about maybe more than 10, more than 10 kilometers to get to school. So this classroom block that has been, you know, uh, built here through CDF uh, will really go a long way uh, in, 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 in serving the children in this community. The team also visited Muyembe Community School in Katoba Ward, which has been constructed at a cost of 749,560 kwacha through CDF and awaits commissioning. Katoba Ward Councillor Rebecca Banda stated that the school is expected to enroll more early childhood learners that have not been able to attend classes at schools located in other distant areas of the ward. Um. The next school from this one has been very far. So small children from this area used to cover about five to six kilometers to the next school. So this means small children beginning maybe the age of four will be able to start school at the early stage in life. 
Yes, and the community is excited with uh, the coming of this school year. Parents in the two wards are elated with this development. Ni mwai watu wauti wana wafendileko pafupi basie kuenda mitunda itai itali. Chifukua wanari kufuti kazo wana tikalangana maskulu kwa mene ya lidi wena ngu wanari kana maskulu chifukua ja, jama distance ya mene ya lidi kuhedi. So ni chua ya mikirika kwa mbili kutipati mangirako skulu hii tiponso watifakako na kakiniki pafupi hapa. So tia mikira kwa mbili. Sheila Makosa reporting for Zanis in Chongwe district. In southern province, Kalomo Town Council has successfully implemented all the projects for the 2023 Constituency Development Fund, CDF, for both Kalomo Central and Dundumwezi constituencies. The local authority says school bursaries, skills training, capital projects, among others, for the two constituencies have successfully been implemented. We have details in this report. The Kalomo Town Council has successfully implemented several projects under the 2023 Constituency Development Fund in both Kalomo Central and Dundumwezi constituencies. We are handing over money to the tune of 3.2 million, 223 cooperatives, 135 of which are from Kalomo Central, while 88 are under Dundumwezi. We are also handing over 1,500 this, 500 are for Dundumwezi constituency, while 1,000 are for Kalomo Central. And this is at a cost of one. 1.8 million, giving us a grand total of 4.3 million. Southern Province Local Government Officer Charleston Hamuliata urged civic leaders to spread CDF equitably. One of the members of the panel, councillors, chair, when we are helping our people to identify projects that should be implemented in this world, let's ensure that we give them a guide that whatever project that is going to take place in those words should benefit the individual as well as the community. The Lomo Central Member of Parliament, Harry Kamboni, says anyone is free to apply for CDF. Anyone who has got a good business plan, conditions are good, we assess it, we give. The WDC approved, we give. It doesn't have to be a UPND member and it's free because all are in my position. Whether they belong to other parties, we empower them, we don't choose. Mr. Sumombe says all those who applied for loans and grants in 2023 have benefited. Of the we did apply my loans under 2023, we delivered 100%. Local contractors added their voices to appreciate CDF as a life game changer. Kwa ni rume hurumende iru tanzi ya UPND. Igule tamu zezoa decentralization. Iguti aswebo nukwa taka hivitwe izipe kukutitui jisi notu zwa kumunzi. Martin Mashekwa, Zanis, reporting in Kalomu, Southern Province. Thank you for that report. Meanwhile, Workers' Composition Fund Control Board Chief Executive Officer Patrick Siampwili says the institution has granted a waiver for employers that have defaulted payment of premiums over assessments of their employees. Mr. Siampwili says that the fund has also awarded all defaulting employers a period of three months from January 2024 to 31st March 2024, within which all employers owing the institutions will settle their premiums. And Southern Province Minister Credon Nanjua has called on the institution to enhance monitoring of operationalization of labor laws, especially in mining firms, to ensure the, work, the safety of mine workers is upheld. We have details in the following report. Mining accounts for one of the leading sectors contributing to the sustained economy of Southern Province. Despite this, operations within the sector are usually met with controversy resulting from lax adherence to safety guidelines within which miners operate. In some instances, this has resulted in deaths and accidents of miners without compensation. Southern Province Minister Credo Nanjua is concerned with the Workers' Compensation Control Board visiting the province, Mr. Nanjua has used this interaction to call on the board to address this matter. There is also an observation on the lack of safety measures in some of these organizations, especially in the mining sector. Especially certain foreign-owned companies, they are so neglectful. 
that comprom compromises everything and puts our people in danger at a very high risk. So it's very, very important that these joint operations are undertaken in these mining areas for the safety of our people so that we minimize accidents. Here, the Workers' Compensation Board chairperson announced the removal of waivers on some of its clients to enhance compliance. We are in the clarion call by government to remove all bottlenecks in the, in the carrying out of business. The Workers' Compensation Fund Control Board decided to grant a waiver on penalties to all those employers who are in default uh, uh, insofar as the payment of premium job or assessment is concerned. The window for this waiver is January to 31st March. So all employers uh, who will pay the principal amount during the current of the period uh, who have the inter penalty component uh, discounted. So we are actually here, here to encourage uh, employers to take advantage of this window and uh, regularize their standing with the workers' compensation. This is Simusole, Zanis, in Choma District, Southern Province. We take you to Muchinga Province, where three brothers living alone have been left homeless in Nakonde after their house was damaged following heavy rains experienced in the district. The three brothers, aged 8, 11, and 18, have been living and fending for themselves after their parents divorced. Nakonde District Commissioner Mavela Sikapizie visited the three brothers and was not happy with their father, who has reappeared to help rebuild the damaged house. Titani Zulu has the rest of the story. A family of three young siblings has been left devastated after heavy rains destroyed their house. The three brothers, aged 18, 11 and 8, who have been living alone after their parents divorced and went separate ways, are now homeless. The district commissioner, upon hearing about the situation, has visited the affected family to assess the damage and offer assistance. <laughs> The father of the children, who has since remarried and only checks on his sons from time to time, was found at the scene trying to rebuild the house. Titani Zolo reporting for Zanis in Nakonde district. A team of council security officers from Livingston City Council this morning swung into action and confiscated various items sold in streets located within residential areas. The operation saw the council grab items ranging from perishable to non-perishable food items. Council Public Relations Manager Melvin Mukela told journalists after the operation that residents of Damba North area where the operation was conducted were given prior warning to stop trading in the streets. Mr. Mukela stressed that the council will not relent but conduct similar operations in other residential areas where people are conducting their business businesses along the main road. He said the council has noted a sharp increase in the mushrooming of makeshift stalls, a move which he said has to be halted forthwith. Livingston City Council police officers have moved into the streets of some residential areas confiscating items found selling along the streets. The officers swung into action this morning grabbing whatever they could lay their hands on along Botswana Road in Livingston's Damba North area. The move to grab the items from the purported vendors has not settled well with the victims as well as concerned residents.
an alternative place to trade from, not to get their produce, their products, what they are selling and put in the vehicles and wherever they are taking them. But Livingstone City Council Public Relations Manager Melvin Mukela says nothing will stop the council from getting rid of street vendors, whether in the central business district or streets along residential areas. The operation continues and the, we expect that after this operation that we have done in the Dumbo North, all other streets will be cleared. Uh, because uh, this has sent a signal. But those that uh, are resisting, of course, uh, they shall be visited by the council and uh, uh, they shall be at a loss. So to avoid these losses, let them comply with the law. Emily Kando, reporting for Zanis in Livingstone. And that item brings us to the end of the news, but before we go, we take a recap of stories that made headlines. President Hichilema directs controlling officers to be committed on duty. 53-year-old nurse empowered with tractor. Choma DC says schools are 90% ready to open. Plus friends leave three boys homeless. That is all we had for you on this edition of Zanis News. Thank you so much for joining us. And on behalf of the entire production team, it's pleasant viewing.